folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Yardmaster. It's a game for two to five players for ages 13 and up, and the average play time is about 20 minutes. So uh, the basic gist of this game is that you are going to be collecting cargo cards. They consist of different colors, and uh, you're going to be turning those cargo cards in to collect rail cars. You're going to be adding these rail cars to the back of your engine, which will net you victory points. And the first player to reach the goal point value, which is determined at the beginning of the game, will win. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at the components and see how the game is played. Okay, so here's a quick look at all of your components. Uh, you've got a box here. This is your box insert. This is where the exchange rate tokens go and your cards over here. This is the front of the box. Very hard material. I really like that. Good quality. You've got your instruction manual here. It's uh, 11 pages including game credits and all that jazz. Uh, you've got this uh, bonus cards guide. Basically it outlines all of the different bonus cards that are in the game and their special effects. You've got these engine cards. Each player receives one of these at the beginning of the game. Uh, they're all the same. They don't have any sort of special effect or anything like that. Uh, there are these uh, exchange rate tokens. Here's a green 2 to 1, yellow 2 to 1, purple, blue, and red 2 to 1. Each player receives a random one at the beginning of the game. Any leftovers will go in the middle of the table like that. You've got this large deck of cargo cards. You're going to shuffle this up separately from this other deck over here, which I'll get to. You're going to shuffle this up, deal one face up to start the discard pile here, and each player receives a hand of five cards. This is the rail card deck. You're going to shuffle this deck up, deck up separately from this one, and you're going to deal four face up to form the pool of sorts. Players can buy from this pool throughout the game, and they'll be adding these cards to their engine or behind their engine as the game is played. Finally, you've got this yard master token. You're going to give this to the uh, player that is to the right of the starting player. Since play proceeds clockwise around the table, basically it's whoever's going last. If you're playing two players, then you'll want to give this to the second player, not the first one. Now on a player's turn, they'll have two action points with which to spend, and there are three different ways they can go about doing that. They can repeat actions if they want to, they can perform them in any order, it's just that they have two action points to spend, and uh, then their turn is over. The first thing they can do on their turn is draw a card from either the deck or the discard pile and add it to their hand. There is no hand limit. If this is a bonus card showing in the discard pile, they cannot draw that. The second thing they can do on their turn is discard cards in order to buy one of these rail cars. And what you need to do to do that is basically each of these rail cars have a number showing on them along with a color, and you have to turn that many cards in of that color in order to buy it. So in order for me to buy this purple one over here, I need to discard three of these purple cargo cards. If I wanted to buy this yellow one, I need to discard one yellow one. And then whenever I buy it, I can add it to my engine over here. And then third and finally, and then there's more to it than that, but let me get to the last one here. You can swap exchange rate tokens. You can pick another player, exchange tokens with them, or if there are any in the middle of the table, if you're playing with uh, less than five players, there's going to be some left over, you can go ahead and exchange this with another token in the center of the table, or again with another player. So this exchange rate token, basically uh, it allows you to turn in cards of a particular color in order to use them for a color that you don't have in your hand. For example, um, let's just say that I have this hand here and I really want this red card. I do have enough to buy that purple over there. I have three purples. But I have a purple exchange rate token and I really want that red card. I only have one red cargo card in my hand, however. So if I wanted to buy this, what I could do is I could use my exchange rate token. It's purple. So I can trade in two purple cards and make them red, and then I can play my other red one. So you've got one red card here, one red card here. That would allow me to buy this. I discard all of these, and this goes behind my engine here, like so. Now, uh, whenever you go ahead and buy from this pool, you go ahead and flip over another one. Now, you don't have to put cards into your um, engine row immediately. They can sort of go off to the side temporarily, and there's a reason why you might do this. There is a stipulation 
uh, whenever you're laying these cards down behind your engine. The uh, car or the rail car that you put down uh, behind the existing one, it has to be either of the same color or the same number. So in order for me to put another car down here, I either have to put like a purple two or a green two or a yellow two, or I'd have to put like a red one or a red three down or something like that in order to meet that stipulation. It's sort of like playing Uno if you've ever played Uno. But as of right now, there are no rail cars out here that would um, you know be legal to play behind this one. So if I were to buy another card in the future, like if I used my second action and, and discarded this and bought this, because this is only one purple, I'd have to put this off to the side for the time being until I can uh, get another card or say maybe a, a red one, and then I could put that purple one right after that. Okay, so before we go, I just wanted to cover a few miscellaneous things. There's a series of bonus cards in the cargo deck. Um, they allow you to perform actions without spending an action point. So you can add them to your hand as you draw them face down. You're not going to be able to draw them uh, from the face-up discard pile, but you can get them uh, through a blind draw of the uh, face-down deck. And you get these, you add them to your hand, and you can play them. They don't cost any action points to use. Um, here's a few of them. Exchange one-to-one. -one. Discard this bonus card to pay one-to-one -one with your current exchange rate token for one purchase. Uh, there's a plus-one action. Discard this bonus card to take an additional action on your turn, uh, draw two cargo cards, pay one less, and take one discarded. So there's a series of cards in the cargo deck that allow you to, you know, perform special abilities. You've also got this Yardmaster token. I've touched on this briefly before. But whenever you have this, it'll give you a third action point to use on your turn. Whenever you take your turn and you have this and you're done with your turn, you're going to pass this to the player on your right and play is going to proceed to the left. So this is going to go in the reverse direction, um, you know, with regard to how players are taking their turns. But yeah, whenever you have this, you'll get an extra action point to use on your turn. When you're playing with two players, the way this works is you're going to give it to the other player, but they're going to flip this face down. They're not going to be able to use it immediately. On their next turn, then they'll be able to use it. Then when they're, when they're done using it for that turn, they'll give it to you and you're going to put it face down you're going to take your turn, flip it face up, and then you'll keep it. And then on your next turn, you'll be able to use the three action points. So basically every other turn, uh, well, yeah, every other your turn, you'll get three action points instead of two. So it's an interesting uh, mechanic, this. There you have it, a very brief look at Yardmaster. It's important to stress that I did not cover all of the rules found in the manual. This was just to give you a general overview so that you could see how the game was played. As far as what I thought, um, it's not a bad little game. I was a little confused at first um, because the, the very first paragraph of the rule book, you are in the freight yard competing to load your train first by reaching the point goal. It's something I didn't touch on earlier. In a two to three player game, it's 18 points. Four to five players, it's 16 points. And the first player to reach that point goal wins. But uh, to score, you must collect cargo, which can be used to buy rail cars. That's what I don't understand. So wait, you've got cargo, but you're spending that cargo, you're giving it to somebody else to buy rail cars. Wouldn't it make more sense to load rail cars with the cargo that you have? Why, are my, why am I spending cargo to buy a rail, empty rail car? I don't understand that. So, I mean, it's just, it, the objective in the rule book didn't make much sense. But, I mean, the game plays simple enough. Again, cargo cards, trading those in to get rail cars, put them behind your engine, score points, win the game. That part's easy. It's just, it's just a weird setting. Uh, it's just it's just explained a little weird in the rule book. Maybe I'm just being dense. I don't know. It's possible. It's been known to happen. Uh, this is a great casual slash filler game. Um, it goes for like twenty to twenty five bucks on Amazon. I do think that's a little bit expense you know on the expensive side for a card game. Most card games I see retail for between ten and twenty. So this one's a little bit more expensive than most. Uh, however, the card quality and the Box quality is fantastic. I mean, this is probably one of the hardest box covers in my entire collection. I've got like, I don't know, 300 games probably in my attic or in my closet, wherever. They're scattered throughout the house. Um, and, and this is one of the harder ones I have. So, uh, you know, the good quality here may be, uh, you know, to blame for the higher than normal price. So I'm not going to knock that too hard. The, uh, the card art is fairly simplistic. Uh, a yellow card with a little oil drop on it. 
it's not all that fancy. I mean, the card backs are kind of sleek looking. I mean, the, the art's fine. It's just, I guess it could have been a little better, but it, the theme does fit and, and the art all ties together. So it doesn't look bad. It's just, you know, I mean, some parts of it are cool, other parts are a little bit simplistic, in my opinion, anyway. But yeah, uh, this is a very casual, family-friendly game. It would also serve as a great filler. So if you're looking for, you know, a nice casual game to play, go check this one out. Um, assuming that the $25 price tag doesn't bother you. It bothered me somewhat, but once I, again, once I started doing this with the box and the cards are very easy to shuffle, um, the tokens are nice too. So it's, it's good quality. So you won't have to worry about, you know, spending 25 bucks on a cheap feeling game. It's not cheap at all. It's, it's good quality. If you guys want to check out my full written review, you can at www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.